Service, purpose, passion, and commitment. Four words I learned about at a very young age from my father. My father taught me that if you are ever in a position to help someone, then you should do it. He also told me to find my purpose in life, whether it was baking cookies or working on cars. Find something that I am passionate about and remain committed to it for the rest of my days. Now my father also taught me about patriotism, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution. And he taught me that for many years, brave men and women had sacrificed their lives to defend this country and those documents and preserve the freedoms that we enjoy today. It was with that that led me to joining the United States Army and wanting to become an airborne infantry soldier. I felt as I had found my purpose in life and how I was so passionate about serving the United States yeah. of America and being fully committed to that. Uh -huh. On April 8, 2006, I was severely wounded by a roadside bomb while serving in Talafar, Iraq. There is a saying, all gave some and some gave all. I gave some that day. Private First Class Jody Wayne Misseldine gave all for this country. He was 19 years old and he was one of my soldiers. He was one of the men that I had promised that I would help protect. And for so long, I thought his death was all my fault. Every day, I wear okay. this bracelet that bears his name. Okay, um, and I never take it off. I do this to honor his memory, for his family, and to serve as a constant reminder to me to always live. But the truth is, that day I became a statistic. I became one of an estimated 400,000 returning veterans from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan suffering with one of the unseen wounds of war, post-traumatic stress. I learned quickly how to adapt to my physical injuries, but it was the mental and emotional wounds that hurt the most. Each day was filled with guilt and anger and failure as a leader. I began to have sudden outbursts of anger, yelling at my own family, at my children. I had nightmares. I couldn't be out at a park for more than an hour at a time. I didn't know who I was or what normal was anymore. And I'd often sit on my couch thinking that Jody got the better deal. At least he wasn't allowed around to suffer any longer. My post-traumatic stress led to an eventual divorce. And I came home one evening and my house was empty. And as I sat there on my couch crying, wishing I was with Jody, I finally came up with a plan of what I was gonna do. I walked down the hallway, reached into my closet, pulled out my Glock, pointed it to my head and I pulled the trigger. Obviously the gun wasn't loaded. But I finally began to be, become excited that I had a plan that I knew exactly what I was gonna do and how I was gonna do it. I was gonna take my own life. That night I decided to go out and celebrate. I finally had a plan. I felt like I finally had a purpose. I went out that night and I got into a lot of trouble. When I finally did come home, I went to sleep. And I woke up later that afternoon and had a voicemail on my phone from Wounded Warrior Project. There was a lady on the other end, she said, Jeremiah, I want you to come out to Soldier Ride Phoenix. Now Soldier Ride is one of our 20 different life-saving programs and services that we offer. And I remember thinking to myself, why would Wounded Warrior Project want to send me to the desert? You're gonna have to laugh, folks. My jokes don't get much better. <laughs> but I reluctantly agreed to go, knowing that something in my life needed to change. When I arrived in Phoenix, I met some of the most wonderful, dedicated purple people that work for this organization. I was hugged and high-fived, and for the first time in a long time, I felt appreciated. And I met a lot of other warriors that weekend as well. 
I met a marine leg amputee that climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. I met another warrior that was training for the Paralympics. And I met a set of brothers that changed my life, Eric and Devin Shy. Eric was in the army. And he was shot in the head by a sniper while serving in Iraq. He's now a quadriplegic confined to a wheelchair. His mother is his own 24 hour a day caregiver. His brother Devin, upon learning Eric was wounded, he joined the army. Devin was shot four times while serving in Afghanistan. But Devin peddled his brother Eric 25 miles on a tandem bicycle through that Arizona desert. And along the way, some people would come up behind and help push that bicycle along. And I am very proud to say that I was one of those warriors. And I immediately became inspired by the events of that weekend. That weekend taught me about the logo of Wounded Warrior Project. The logo of Wounded Warrior Project depicts one warrior carrying another warrior, moving forward. I was physically carried off the battlefield years ago in Iraq, but Wounded Warrior Project picked me up and brought me home emotionally. I was the warrior on top of our logo. Now I have, thank you. Now I have the incredible opportunity to be the warrior on the bottom of our logo, to reach out and help bring my fellow brothers and sisters home. We call it living the logo. Every day, I think about Jody. I think about his life and what he could have been if he were alive today. I realize now that as the warrior on the bottom of the logo, I get to live my life for him. I remember Jody every day. People are forgetting about the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. People are forgetting about the casualties from those wars. People are forgetting that the wounds from those wars will last a lifetime. And ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you with this final thought. The greatest casualty is being forgotten. Thank you.